Hi and welcome to vlog one of Love Your River Coal. I'm Simon Watts, a wildlife cameraman and filmmaker, and I've been given the privilege to make this and five more vlogs based on and around the beautiful River Coal. This is a partnership led by Warwickshire Wildlife Trust called Love Your River Coal, hashtag Lyric or abbreviated Lyric, and funded by the Green Recovery Challenge Fund, which is in conjunction funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. I come at it from a personal experience because I cut my teeth as a naturalist right here on the banks of the River Coal in Moseley and Spark Hill with an area called Springfield. And from now through to summertime, I intend to bring you the best of the conservation and community projects based on and around the River Coal. Also personal, personal experiences, I want to meet people and have their personal experiences of the River Coal itself and what it's done for them. In fact, if you've got any ideas for me or any personal experiences, please drop them to me through any social media site using hashtag lyric small i. I'll also bring in the best of the history, the history that's attached to this wonderful river. I know certainly a few places where there's an incredible history that I can divulge to you. And also, being a wildlife cameraman, I'm going to bring you the best of the natural history. So every vlog pertaining to the season, I'll bring you one or two things to look out for as you're strolling down the banks of the coal. Now I heard on the grapevine recently that Kingshurst Brook, as a confluence of the River Coal in Meriden Park, Chelmsley Wood, was about to see some significant conservation action. Why? Well, the brook itself has had sediment build up over the years, widened a lot, until pretty much it's turned into a lake. It's not a stream or a brook anymore, so it needed some action. I went down there with my camera to capture the action and also to speak to Andrew Panashinok, one of the project leaders. Enjoy. In the, in the 1960s, on the Kingsers Brook, there was a weir placed to create a boating lake for the community to enjoy. Unfortunately, with the amount of um, debris, rubbish and silt coming down the stream, it's become a bit of a marshy trap. So what we try to do is to narrow the stream, so like in a hose pipe, you squeeze the hose pipe and the water becomes faster. We narrowed it using the stakes, the bundles of hazel. The gravel, we had 600 tons of gravel placed in here. Uh, to narrow it down, increase the speed of the water and create these fantastic clean gravel areas which are great for spawning fish, lots of wildlife, they increase the oxygen level in the water which allows life to thrive again. This could be a great showcase project for what could be achieved in urban areas and you create these amazing oases of greenery, clean flowing water which is great for the community, especially in densely populated areas like um, in here in Solihull. Now, of course, just as important as the conservation work, the vital conservation work, is enthusing people and in fact creating conservationists. A little dicky bird told me that down in Birmingham Eco Park they were doing just that. It was a project run in conjunction or in partnership with the Princess Trust and Birmingham and Black Country Wildlife Trust. They were offering courses to engage people into learning conservation skills, how to work the land and use tools. I popped down there to find out what was going on, meet some of the participants and see how it was affecting them directly and potentially how it was going to affect their future. Yeah. Today's the last day on the Princess Trust course in nature and conservation. All the work we've been doing as part of the course is actually work that the woodlands really needed, making like meaningful changes to the woodlands here. Um, because obviously climate change, COP26, these are all very important like topics and issues to care about and play our little part. So yeah. 
it's just nice to come back to nature and definitely like for mental health it's just so much more calming. Being on this Princess Trust course has been a really good fun, I've absolutely loved this week. It's been so nice just to be able to go outdoors again and be able to help nature and learn how to use all the different tools that you would need to, to better do that. It's been a great, great week in general, I wouldn't have chosen it for the world really. Some of the people I've met have been re really good people. Hopefully I'll be yeah, keeping in contact with all of them for as long as I can, really. I got involved in the Princess Trust, not knowing what I was going to be able to do. And they offered me this going into nature conservation, learning how to use different variety of tools outside. And I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Now I've done my full week on my last day today. Throughout the week, I've learned to use different variety of tools like loppers, shears, dutch hose, packing hose, draw hose or different type of pose. <laughs> really get an understanding what it's like to work in nature really. And it's been really enjoyable. I've had a really nice time meeting new people, uh, just getting outdoors. So for me it was more of um, a confidence boost. Try something new. I didn't really know what tools were for necessarily, so this has just broadened my knowledge. So now I'm a bit more advanced and I can uh, know a bit more of what I'm doing just to be in the fresh air, doing something active as well. I always enjoy doing things with my hands. So I think after the week, it's had a really nice impact on my well-being. Uh, I just feel a bit more relaxed. I think it's been quite therapeutic and seeing the result has been really nice. Feeling proud of what you've achieved throughout the day and working well in a team has been really nice. Getting to know everyone. Well. That's absolutely amazing. I'm hoping that I meet some of those guys again in the near future when they're running their own projects affecting the local landscape for its benefit. Back in October now, it seems ages ago, but Oaks and Shires ran a wonderful open day event in Yorkswood next to Babsmill Lake and the River Cole. And this open day was for the local community to attend, for the wonder of being under the canopy, meet a wonderful Shire horse meet some local craftsmen, toast some marshmallows. I am a wild thing crowned with Libby And also oh, come along to the Tame Valley Wetlands Rocks Wildlife Trust stall where I was, introducing the wonders, the creepy crawly wonders of freshwater natural life. Here to remind you where we all belong Green land beneath the shining sun she pours the rays all down upon the earth The stuff of life you could not count it so well Her light and her warmth are free to all Her blessing to all life does call wonderful to see some really truly enthusiastic nature mad kids there and that's the core of it isn't it it's engaging with the younger generations even with the most fundamental most foundation levels of wildlife engaging them so that they can appreciate it so they can have empathy for it and there on in you'll find you'll get you'll generate adults that have this conservation-led mind potentially becoming the guardians of our natural world in the future it's absolutely vital stuff. Wonderful. Well, as promised, as a wildlife cameraman, of course, I'm going to give you a little bit of wildlife. And to end today's vlog one of Love Your River Coal, I'm going to show you two elements of British wildlife you will find here on the banks of the coal, potentially on a winter walk. Standing a little over a metre tall, you'd be surprised not to have noticed this bird before, but they can have skulking habits. I'm talking about the grey heron. During winter time, grey heron can often move to more built up areas and they are absolutely a mainstay on the River Col. You may see them statuesque like standing on the banks, ever so occasionally moving, stalking their fishy or foggy prey stealthily. Or you may see one if it takes fright as you round a corner and then they can burst from the undergrowth, taking flight with an impressive nearly two meter wingspan. The second bird we're gonna look at in today's vlog one of Love You River Coal is also a member of the Heron and Egret family. This time it's the little egret. Only becoming a resident bird in recent decades, they are now a firm fixture on the banks of the coal. Instantly recognizable by their snow white plumage 
and being only half the size of a grey heron, about 60 centimetres tall. They tend to be far more active in their behaviour, not simply sitting stealthily, but actually stalking prey. Often, as you'll see here, they'll use their feet waggling in the water to try and disturb a fish. And do also notice their yellow feet, known as yellow socks. Again, just like the grey heron, one will take to flight, just as soon as you see it or it sees you. And you should be able to notice that with both the grey heron and the little egret, they fly with deeply curved wings. Well, I hope you enjoy one of those two birds on your next wintry walk along the River Coal. You can flush them quite easily, and they're not so rare now, so there's every chance you might do that. Please do remember to use the hashtag Lyric with a small I, Love Your River Coal, on any social media site against any stories or experiences you've had on or about the coal. As I said, I'm going to be here from now through to summer with vlogs one to six, but for vlog one, that's the end. Please do be safe. Please do enjoy the River Coal. Please take maybe something warm with you to keep the chill away. But for now, cheers guys, and I look forward to seeing you in vlog two. Bye-bye.